My name is Joshua King. I am a professor in the biology department, um, and my lab works primarily on uh, questions about ecology, so where things live and why they live there and what their impacts are in nature. Um, and we tend to specialize mostly on insects, in particular ants. Fire ants are actually kind of interesting. So they, they do have actually positive impacts. A lot of people don't know that. Um, they reduce hard ticks in areas where they live. So those are ticks that affect us and cattle and dogs. Um, they've also had positive effects in some uh, agricultural systems like cotton. They reduce boll weevil, which is a really positive thing. Um, but most of our understanding of fire ants is through viewing them as negative. They do definitely have negative impacts on small vertebrates, so birds, mammals, lizards, that nest and live right on the ground. Fire ants may not necessarily be responsible for their populations declining, um, but where they occur, their populations are small and fire ants are sort of coming along and creating additional problems for them. And that is actually where a lot of our uh, work with threatened and endangered species has focused on animals that nest on the ground and are vulnerable to being preyed upon by fire ants. The whole thing started uh, back when I was working on fire ants as a postdoc. Um, and in that case, what we wanted to do wa uh, was experiments. We wanted to have places where fire ants occur naturally, and we wanted to remove them. Um, but we didn't want to use pesticides because all of our pesticides that we use to control ants are general, meaning that they could kill other ants. And we only wanted to know what happens if we take fire ants out of the system. So in order to do that, uh, we used a, a sort of an old folk remedy, which is pouring hot water on fire ants. It's been around forever. Uh, but we sort of ramped it up and started using really high volumes of water. So moving forward from that, I said, you know, there's got to be a better way to do this. got to be a more efficient way to do it. Um, so I started tinkering with basically modifying pressure wash systems that uh, have a heating uh, element in them uh, and modified that system so it actually works to inject water into the mounds and uh, put it all on a trailer so we could carry large volumes of water into the field and control lots of fire ants. The advantage is we can do this in places where you can't use insecticides. So uh, sensitive wildlife areas in and around threatened and endangered species, you, you really can't use pesticides in those scenarios. It still allows us to control fire ants very effectively. Fire ants create a structure below ground. They, they create space um, and it's, it's really complex. Um, but if we're applying hot water to kill them, we can use that to our advantage. I think the most exciting thing about it is that uh, we have a tool that's uh, very unusual. It solves a problem, uh, which is we're eliminating a pest species, um, but we're doing it without pesticides. So that, uh, that gives us freedom to apply it in, in any scenario. But it also gives us an option if we're in a situation where we just can't use pesticides at all. So we didn't really have any options before then. Uh, now we can. So uh, that's the exciting part is it's a real world application born out of a research need, right? We wanted to just get control fire ants, but it turns out that actually works out pretty good for lots of other applications in the room.